we're going to move on to viruses now. And um, viruses generally make people sick. And so we um, there's been a lot of talk about viruses lately and um, a lot of movies made about viruses. So, you know, those movies, they take the most dramatic points and they, um, they magnify them. And so they can make a very interesting movie about it. Um, this picture up here shows an adenovirus, which is a cause of a common cold. And, and uh, viruses are, they're amazing because their shapes are so odd. We, um, you know, when we look at a virus, we see a shape that looks kind of cartoonish. And um, anybody that's ever seen the Jimmy Neutron cartoon where the virus, um, where they go after the, the virus inside of Carl and they see the virus and it's kind of walking around, well, viruses actually look like that. So they're very interesting. So properties of viruses. Um, viruses are very different from anything else that we see. They don't have a membrane. They don't have cytoplasm, no ribosomes, so they don't create any proteins. They don't have cellular components. They can't move or grow on their own, and they can only reproduce if they take over a host cell, okay? So they do not reproduce on their own. And that's why we say that a virus is not a living thing. It's not a cell and um, it can't do the things that cells do. It doesn't grow, it doesn't metabolize, it doesn't move by itself, and it doesn't reproduce. So we don't consider them to be alive. What viruses are is they actually are made of two major parts, a protein coat and the DNA, RNA inside of it. Um, so it's really just this package of hereditary material and they're extremely tiny. They're much smaller than bacteria. And so we can't see a virus unless we have really advanced electron microscopes. So if we try to look at a virus under a compound microscope, there's no way we would see it. It's not gonna show up because they're very tiny. All right, so viral reproduction. Um, what happens is during the lytic cycle, the virus goes into a cell and it uses that cell's machinery to reproduce itself and then it causes the cell to burst. It kills the cell and the reproduced virus moves on. But there's also a lysogenic cycle and in the lysogenic cycle, the kind of the same thing happens. The virus infects the cell and it takes over the cell's machinery and it reproduces but it doesn't kill the cycle, or it doesn't kill the cell right away. And so it can uh, move out of the cell without killing the cell. And so this is why sometimes we have um, diseases that they don't make us sick immediately. So because they're not immediately killing our cells, we don't recognize that we're sick right away. And virulent viruses, they're, when we talk about virulent, we usually talk about viruses that make people very sick, but in these cases, they can undergo both cycles. All right, here's a table that shows some diseases in humans. All of these are viruses. So the sexually transmitted diseases, AIDS, genital warts, genital herpes, those are all viruses. The childhood diseases that we have vaccines for, mumps, measles, chickenpox, German measles, are viruses. Um, respiratory diseases, the common cold is a virus, the flu is a virus. And then we have some, um, some other things that maybe are not as common, like warts and fever blisters and shingles. Those are all caused by a virus. We also have emerging viruses. These are illnesses that were not previously known. We had not seen those before. These are fairly new viruses. So we have the AIDS virus, um, West Nile virus, SARS, Ebola, and the bird flu. And the way that these develop are is because there could be a mutation of a known virus. So we have a virus that we're familiar with, basically like the flu. We're very familiar with the flu, but there's mutations and that makes kind of a new version of the flu. 
Um, these new viruses could be because we are developing in a brand new area that's never been really seen by humans before. And so there could be a virus living in a host in that area that um, when we are developing in that area, the people are exposed to it. And so it's new to us, but maybe it's been there for a while and living in the animals that are there. Um, and then also a virus can jump species. So a lot of times we'll see um, a virus that we know that birds get, or we know that pigs get this virus. And we've seen it, we're familiar with it, but it doesn't move to humans because a lot of times these viruses can't move back and forth between animals. But if there's a mutation that allows it to move between the two species, then suddenly we are struck by a virus that used to only be in that animal. And then there's vaccines. And um, vaccines have been um, a great thing for humans because before vaccines, humans died of a lot of different viruses. And they were very, um, some viruses, some things like um, polio were, very hard on people and once vaccines were developed we see a great reduction in the illnesses that are passed along and so the way viruses or i'm sorry the way vaccines work is they're made from either a killed version of the virus or a weakened version it's called non-pathogenic because it doesn't make people sick um, and we inject that into the person's, person's body. And the immune system, it sees that and it recognizes that it's not supposed to be there. And so the immune system responds to that. It attacks that virus and it builds up antibodies. And so those antibodies stay within the person's body. And then, then any time that virus comes into the body, the immune system says, hey, I've seen that before, kill it. And so the antibodies rush in and they kill it right away before it can do any damage to the body. Now, the only time this is a problem is that some viruses, they mutate really fast. And so they change. And so you might be exposed to the flu and you get sick and your body fights it off and your body's built up antibodies. And so you would not normally get sick from that, that particular strand of flu anymore. But because the flu mutates, then the next time you get the flu, it's probably a slightly different version and your immune system doesn't recognize it. And so it doesn't immediately fight it off and you get sick again.